Hi there, how are you? Today I want to talk to you about a different parent graph, specifically parent graph of a circle. Um, you can see my circle drawn right there and I do understand that that is a pretty horrid circle. I should have used a compass, but hopefully you get the idea and make the assumption that that is actually a circle even though it doesn't look like one. Um, that is based off this mother equation right here. It is not a function, so I can't call it the mother function. Um, First of all, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Um, you could look at the x value of zero. Um, when you have an x value of zero, we have two different y values. Um, I mean, we can look at that, at that here on our xy chart. When I put in an x value of zero, well, zero squared is zero. So that leaves me with this. Hmm. Okay. Well, if that's zero, 1 equals 1, so this must be 1. Well, the way we can get 1 when we have that exponent of 2, we're going to have to square it. So we could square 1 as an option, 0, 1, that's that point right there, or we could also square negative 1. Negative 1 squared is also 1. So when we have an x value of 0, we could be at negative 1. We could also be at 1. This singular input really has two different outputs, making it not a function. Um, we can take a look over here at this x value. This x value of positive 1 gives us a y value of 0. And when we put those two back into our equation, it keeps it true. 1 squared, 1 plus 0 is 1, so that holds true. Over here on this negative 1, 0. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. Those are our points for the circle. Um, the general form of the equation is and just like our other functions you can start off and you can say opposite but here when we're dealing with our circle it is Opposite also. Before it was opposite same. Here with a circle, look at the shape of a circle. It's an O. It is opposite, opposite. There's O's on both of those because that will be a circle. And our value is our radius. Okay, that's the general form. Let's put that thing into action and see what some of these graphs look like. X minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 4. That is a circle. I have opposite, opposite for my center, so at 2, negative 3. And I look at that value, I take the square root of that thing right there. Square root of 4 is 2, is our radius, our radius of 2. So I can come in here, I can draw my axes. 2, negative 3, with a radius of 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, one, two. in those cardinal directions, east, west, north, and south. You apply that radius. And then you do the best that you can possibly do to make that thing round. Uh, might be a good idea to use a compass. I don't have one. Sorry, I should be a little bit more responsible than that. Uh, we also need to look at our domain and our range. Domain, x values that are represented by the graph. Range, y values that are represented by the graph. So as I slide across and I first hit my graph, talking about my x values, my domain, I first encounter that graph here. That is an x value of 0. And since my circle is closed, I need to use that bracket there. As I slide on, I last hit my circle, my last x value for my domain at the value of 4, x equals 4, and that is also included. Range similar, this time working your way from the bottom up. First encounter it there, last encounter it there. So my first y value would be y equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And I last hit it at negative 1. 
That is my domain and that is my range. And we can look at the span of my domain. The span of my domain from zero to four, well, that is a difference of four spaces. And if you think about what we have done with our radius of two, from the center to the edge of the circle is two. Well, from the center to the other edge of the circle is also two, so you can look at that diameter of four. Well, that should also be your span here, talking about the domain, and the same goes for the range. The span from a negative five to one is a difference of four spaces. As you can see, one, two, three, four, that would be the diameter all the way across that circle. Is it a function? No, I talked about that earlier previously up there in that XY chart that you can barely kind of see now. Um, does it have asymptotes? No, it does not. It's one example. Let's take a look at another one. Get comfortable graphing these things. X plus four squared plus Y minus one squared equals nine. Okay, I'm looking here and I say opposite. I'm looking here and I also say opposite because I know this is going to be a circle. So the O for opposite, the O for opposite, negative four, one. That is my center. Negative one, two, three, four, positive one. I take a look here at this number on the back end and I'm gonna take the square root of that. That gives me my radius, which is three. Okay, so I'm shooting out three in this direction, out three in that direction, down three, and also up three. Then you try and make that thing round and nice and smooth. Good luck to you. As you can see, I need some work. I totally missed that point. It makes our domain and range, hmm, well, the graph doesn't actually reflect what the domain and range is because of the inaccuracy of my drawing of circles. My apologies. Um, so looking at this domain, range, x values that are represented, well, the first place we hit, if I were to lock that graph in, is there. Last place I hit is there, sliding left to right. Bam, bam. So I first hit at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. First hit at negative 7, and it is included. I last hit at negative 1, also included. Now range, working your way from the bottom up. That is the last point, even though my sloppy circle went below it. I first hit at my y value of negative 2 included, and I last hit at a y value of 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can look at the span of that, negative 7 to 1. Well, that's six spaces. If you take a look at your radius, well, double my radius. 3 and 3 is going to be 6 units all the way across and the same with my range. Negative 2 to 4 is a span of 6 spaces and you can see 3 and 3 will give you 6. Function? No. Fails the vertical line test. It has more than one output for a singular input. Asymptotes? No.